Riken. So he's been working in frustrated magnetism for a very long time, especially with uh, spin ice systems, but looking at quantum effects at very low temperatures uh, with some precise models. So he will tell us some, uh, some of this stuff in three lectures. So one lecture today and two lectures tomorrow. Okay, may I start? Okay, um, okay thank you for introduction. And uh, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me to this uh, nice, uh, very interesting uh, city. Uh, and this is my first reach to India, and uh, it's really, I'm really, you know, uh, excited about that. Um, <clears throat> so um, I I'm going to talk about uh, particle loads, and uh, mostly on uh, U1 quantum spin liquid, um, and it's uh, some variant. Um, and uh, especially uh, with some particular focus on uh, materials and its modeling. <clears throat> so uh, um, I, I would like to thank all the uh, collaborators, uh, <clears throat> and previous collaborators, and the current collaborators, and so on. And especially uh, uh, for the gauge theory aspects, uh, these uh, Leon Balins, Ron KRTP, and Assembly Lee uh, was uh, the key players. And uh, some fast principle calculations and experiments on plasmodium uh, particles and interbium particles and terbium particles. <clears throat> and uh, actually, this is kind of, it, it, uh, it was nice to have some uh, re global uh, uh, international collaborations. <clears throat> and uh, this is an uh, outline of my talk, uh, lectures. Uh, today, I, I will focus on introductions. Uh, I would like to uh, convince, or, or I mean, uh, uh, into explain why I mean these uh, issues are quite interesting, uh, at least uh, to some uh, uh, community. And <clears throat> and this is actually a little, a little bit more than uh, dipolar spin nice, and uh, which I, I hope uh, Professor Jun uh, uh had a nice lecture uh, at this school. And uh, <clears throat> this is nothing but so what is called uh, quantum spin nice. And but uh, actually, the, this definition of the quantum spin nice is somehow very uh, um, um, ambiguous. So uh, I'd like to uh, <clears throat> you know uh, give us some definition, and <clears throat> and also uh, introduce some models how to model these uh, materials, and from a kind of uh, semi microscopic arguments, and. Uh, uh, I will focus on this uh, this uh, uh, 90 minutes, and tomorrow uh, I'm going to talk on um, uh, more about the theories on the uh, model, and uh, particularly uh, that is uh, based on the U1 gauge theory uh, with and without matter fields, and uh, this is actually a kind of extension or more uh, familiar version of the U gauge theory, which is talked by. Uh, Previous uh, lecturers, that it's uh, about the G2 gauge theory, and U1 is you know <clears throat> as he mentioned, uh, this is kind of Maxwellian uh, theory, so it is which is more familiar to uh, uh, physicists. <clears throat> I mean uh, elementary, uh, not elementary, but uh, even in the uh, undergraduate school. Uh, and uh, I will also introduce uh, uh, some uh, results from the numerics, which evidences the uh, U1 spin liquid and uh, how U1 gauge theory works, and based on uh, basically uh, quantum multicolor simulations and some variants. And those uh, techniques have already been uh, explained uh, by Professor Sandvik uh, in this school, too. And <clears throat> in the third, uh, talk, uh, third lecture, I will give you some recent advances on experimental aspects and also theories about that and uh, talk about the uh, issues left for future studies. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so uh, for the first part, uh, hmm? uh, okay, there are some references, but I can skip. For the first part, uh, I will use this uh, uh, PowerPoint, <coughs> but uh, probably later I will switch to uh, Blackboard talk when I talk about the model. <coughs> So uh, <clears throat> this is kind of uh, you know, elementary introduction to uh, uh, geometrical frustration, why it's interesting, and uh, what happens when we have geometrical frustrations. So <clears throat> this is uh, probably a previous speaker already uh, 
you know, explain a lot about this. But uh, basically, uh, mm, basically uh, <coughs> uh, when we have an uh, antiferromagnetic interaction between the two Ising moments, there's uh, only a way, uh, single, single way uh, uh, to align those spins uh, because, I mean, uh, antiparallel configuration uh, is energet energetically favorable. But when you have a triangular, uh, triangularis network like this, so then uh, there's no way uh, to fix it uh, because uh, there's a geometrically frustrated situation here. So uh, whether it is down or up, energy uh, of this triangle uh, spins uh, actually uh, equal. So we cannot fix it. <coughs> and this is kind of a fast example, but uh, there are a lot of others. Um, and uh, one of them is a Cahomelaris, and the other is a Paracolaris. This is two-dimensional, and this is three-dimensional. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> for Paracolaris, uh, actually there are uh, um, corner, uh, corner sharing network of the tetrahedra like this, uh, and this is cubic lattice, and <coughs> there are four different uh, sub lattices, uh, and actually this is a uh, tetrahedron is a kind of a, you know, a elementary building block of the particle lattice, and uh, each side uh, has uh, six neighbors, nearest neighbors, and <coughs> uh, okay. And basically, the, we are working on uh, this uh, as, uh, on the frustrated spins on these particle lattices. So we can see that the uh, triangular uh, networks are everywhere, like here, there, and everywhere. Okay. So this is kind of a, one of the most frustrated model. Uh, I mean, simplest model. <coughs> uh, okay. And then uh, actually, the, this is. Uh, this was first pointed out by Anderson that uh, when we have this kind of structure, geometrical stru structure, we may expect a uh, uh, very interesting, uh, um, I mean, situations, physical, physical phenomena. And uh, <coughs> one uh, of the first, uh, um, you know, realization of this particle structure and uh, observation by Philip Anderson is that it's actually the hexagonal water ice. And the, Probably the second or it will be the magnetite, uh, which is uh, already worked by Anderson. And uh, actually, uh, there is some more controversy even to the date. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the next one will be the spin nice, um, like a dysprosium titanate and holomium titanate, <clears throat> um, which we will uh, I'll explain uh, just uh, briefly uh, in the next few slides. And there, even there are uh, some more extensions of this, uh, this series of materials uh, by changing, uh, substituting the uh, rare earth elements like here uh, with uh, yttrium ions or terbium ions and even actually uh, some others like praseodymium or erbium and many others. <coughs> and there's another candidate uh, which we worked on recently. Uh, uh, um, that's a kind of spinel, but uh, 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 those are B sides of spinel uh, form a particle lattice. And uh, this is another candidate for the <coughs> uh, quantum spin lines. OK, <coughs> so let's go to the classical case. So <coughs> uh, this is uh, quite simplest, uh, simple model for the particle lattice. And this is an antiferromagnetic icing model, uh, nearest neighbor icing model on the particle lattice. And uh, probably, <coughs> um, this has already been explained uh, by John Tunjoko, I, I hope. Um, <coughs> uh, okay, it's not here. <coughs> and uh, if we uh, look at uh, this model, then uh, it's possible to construct a gauge charge uh, of the, con I mean, construct a gauge charge from the four spins on each tetrahedron. And if we sum all, or sum, take the sum of the all the SZ, uh, I think spins, over the tetrahedron, then we get the uh, charge here. And uh, depending on uh, it is pointing in or out, uh, we can assign plus or minus sign for Ising variable. And uh, <coughs> energy is uh, minimized by taking uh, charge zero everywhere. That is uh, <coughs> two into out. So two spins in and two spins out, pointing out. And uh, energy is minimized, and then uh, it's equal to minus 2j. 
and when we have uh, one uh, spin uh, which break the rule, and then uh, we have a plus one or minus one charge, <coughs> and this is energy zero. So this is uh, energetically unfavorable. Uh, <coughs> and of course, the all in one situations are quite uh, energetically costly. So uh, eigen states, uh, ground state uh, should be uh, kind of, uh, uh, I mean, in the ground state, uh, this uh, two into out spin ice rules uh, is uh, uh, fully satisfied. <coughs> so this is the classical uh, Ising model, and uh, it says that uh, the, you know, there's a simple rule for the for the Coulomb phase physics. It's a kind of divergence free, <coughs> so there should be no uh, free charges uh, on over the uh, crystal of the particle lattice. <coughs> So then uh, this divergence free condition leads to a very interesting observation. <coughs> and of course, it is, uh, 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 there's no uh, long range magnetic order down to lowest temperature. And uh, <coughs> interesting observation, there, there are two interesting observations. The one is, the, first of all, the, there are extensive degeneracy in the ground state. Uh, <coughs> so this is a, a plot of the experimental on the theoretical fit to uh, 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 for the specific key divided by the temperature. And this is uh, uh, entropy extracted from this uh, specific key. And it's clear that there is a short, short key like peak, and there's no signal for the phase transition. Um, <clears throat> and if you look at this uh, entropy, so then uh, uh, entropy actually is, you know, uh, computed from uh, by uh, integrating all this uh, C over T over the temperature range from the uh, lowest temperature to some te uh, temperature like here. And then <coughs> it goes up uh, from zero, of course. And, but then uh, it doesn't reach to log two, uh, log two. <coughs> and uh, this, there's a, some missing entropy here, uh, which should be uh, assigned to uh, uh, extensive degeneracy in the ground state. <coughs> and uh, since, uh, of course, it actually uh, depends on uh, how to fit the data or subtract, for instance, uh, uh, nuclear short key peak from, uh, that is coming from the, that comes from the nuclear uh, spins. But uh, <coughs> in general, it's, uh, this missing entropy is comparable to the uh, so-called uh, ice entropy, which is uh, <coughs> uh, roughly approximated by the poly entropy uh, shown here. <coughs> So this is kind of uh, one experimental realization. Uh, I mean, evidence gives, gives the evidence of the uh, spin ice, uh, which is classical, <coughs> okay? And then uh, <coughs> there are some, some uh, numerical simulations uh, based on uh, 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 Ising model uh, with uh, dipole interactions. This, the simulation is done in a model which, not that, that, uh, which includes not only the Nearest neighbor uh, Ising interaction, but uh, magnetic dipole interactions, because <coughs> as we ex uh, as I explain later uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, lecture, um, <coughs> so magnetic moments of the rare earth moment, uh, rare earth ions, is quite large, so that uh, dipole interaction is uh, it's uh, not negligible. So <coughs> so in that case, uh, simulation uh, gives a uh, uh, actually nice. Uh, explanation uh, of the experimental observation. So this is a, a temperature versus magnetic field uh, phase diagram of the dispersion tightening. <coughs> and uh, there's a fast order phase transition in experiment uh, starting from zero temperature to uh, uh, terminating at the critical end point here. And actually it uh, extends to a crossover here. And this is much more like a, a liquid gas phase transition, uh, okay? And uh, in this region, low field region, is dominated by the spin nice rule. So uh, basically, uh, <coughs> the, the spins are satisfying two in, two out uh, spin nice rule. But uh, uh, if we apply a high magnetic field along this one 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 direction, so the magnetic field is uh, applied along one 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 direction so that, uh, um, <coughs> You know, starting from this two in two out, so uh, one 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 is actually the one uh, direction of the one of the spin pointing uh, two. So uh, 
if we apply a minor field, for instance, uh, in this direction, so this spins are forced to flip uh, by a strong enough uh, minor field. So, <coughs> so it comes to a three in one out state uh, at high field. So there, there is a fast order phase transition uh, separating this region and this region here. Okay. Okay, so cannot hear. Okay, <clears throat> so the the plot here uh, was uh, created by you know just integrating out C over T from lowest temperature here to a uh, temperature of our interest. So I mean, by definition, it should be zero at the at the beginning. Okay. So basically, uh, <clears throat> you know, we are they are actually the comparing the entropy uh, release from this temperature to the for instance, that temperature. Okay, and so if actually it, if it reaches uh, log two, so then uh, there should be no, uh, uh, you know, residual entropy at the ground state. But if it doesn't reach to this log two, it, there should be. Okay, Do you understand? <coughs> uh, I mean, uh, <coughs> you can uh, you can interrupt uh, anytime when you have any uh, questions. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, so is it a fully parametric state? Well, um, okay, so actually the parametric state is the state, I mean, the system is parametric all, all the way down to the rest temperature. But when there is a group phase, or there is a phase where there is a phase uh -huh. Okay, so this is just a crossover, but there is no phase transition, okay? <clears throat> and uh, there is no, uh, you know, um, black peak, or any singularity, okay, down to lowest temperature. So we can, uh, you know, analyze uh, the, the those data by, uh, you know, you know, some simple analysis, okay. <coughs> um, okay. <coughs> so that, you know, this is there, this is just a crossover. I mean, if you look at the C over T, okay, there's no singularity. <coughs> okay. So the, here, actually, the I, I show the phase diagram under the magnetic field. So this, uh, you know, data are taken uh, along this line, okay? And uh, there's no phase transition in this region, right? But uh, only apply, uh, on, by, uh, only apply on, uh, you know, high enough magnetic field, then there's a phase transition uh, in, in a, as a function of the magnetic field, but not really a temperature. <coughs> Uh, can you speak loud? So in the right side, actually, the figure that we are showing, so at very low temperature, if we increase the magnetic field, we are going from this two in, two out, to uh, three in, one out. Mm -hmm. So if we increase it further, can we go to that four in, four out kind of thing? Uh, okay, so the answer is no. Yeah, because uh, we are, they are applying a magnetic field on the one on one direction, okay? So, <coughs> One 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 is the one of the spin direction here, mm -hmm. and there is a huge uh, special uh, magnetic anastropy of the uh, spins uh, on the particular sides. So they can only uh, point in either inwards or outwards. outwards. So if we apply magnetic field on the one of the one 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 direction here, so then okay, so it end up with, for instance, uh, this situation, right? Um, so if you apply magnetic field, then uh, this is the uh, you know, uh, kind of give, provides a saturated moment. So it's not possible to get this stage. <coughs> okay. Okay. So <coughs> I mentioned that there are two, at least two, uh, interesting observations of the, I mean, as a result of the Coulomb phase physics. The one is the absence of any long range order or singularity down to the lowest temperature and with uh, some uh, extensive degeneracy at the ground state. <coughs> and the other is uh, kind of a subproduct, and that is a uh, um, <coughs> uh, non, uh, ana I mean, anastropic, actually dipolar spin correlations. <coughs> uh, they're uh, found by these people and uh, uh, actually some others, uh, including. Uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, 
Chris Henley and uh, okay, some other people. Um, <clears throat> actually, this is a plot of the spin correlations along the particular uh, plane of the wave vectors, that is uh, HHL directions in a reciprocal large unit. So each index uh, is uh, kind of um, each, each, uh, each, and, each of the H and L uh, index actually uh, uh, on the uh, momentum uh, component in a unit of the 2 pi over A, where A is the uh, uh, lattice constant of the cubic unit cell. Uh, so that's a uh, side length of the cube. Um, <clears throat> so then the uh, uh, white plot, a white part actually shows uh, uh, quite intense uh, 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 correlations of the spins. But the black uh, actually uh, is quite low. So if you look at this picture, then uh, we see uh, quite anisotropic uh, correlations. Uh, for instance, around this point, or this point, or that point, and all these uh, symmetry-related points. And these points are actually uh, reciprocal lattice vectors. So <clears throat> uh, when, we have, uh, when we approach, uh, uh, for instance, gamma point, uh, gamma point cannot be I mean, uh, anisotropic because uh, it's, uh, it has a quite low intensity. But uh, uh, respro uh, any reciprocal lattice vector except at the gamma point, we, we see uh, uh, quite huge, I mean, anisotropy. So uh, along this line, we have a, a kind of rich structure. <clears throat> so the intensity is quite high. But uh, actually, if you look at the spin correlations um, along this line, so uh, actually, we can immediately see that the uh, spin correlation is quite short uh, because uh, there's no, uh, you know, sudden drop of the intensity along this direction. But uh, on the other hand, if you look at this direction, so then uh, actually the, uh, uh, ideally the spin correlation actually diverges uh, down to the lowest temperature, the ground state. <coughs> so, um, you know, okay, so this is a kind of a um, result of the Kuhn phase physics in, in this case. And this actually comes from the divergence-free conditions of the spins. So namely, uh, these conditions. <clears throat> so if we have a system which uh, we can uh, construct uh, some gauge charge from uh, SZ or any spin components, and if we have this condition at the ground state, then we always have the situations like this. So we should see a kind of pinch point. This is called pinch point, okay, or Bota structure. And experimentally, <clears throat> there are some observations uh, which uh, try to uh, find these uh, structures. And there are several uh, on the dispersium titanate, also the holomium titanate. And this is uh, one of the uh, re recent results. It's not really recent, but already uh, eight years ago. Um, there are some structure, uh, anisotropic structure around the reciprocal lattice vector here, there, and everywhere, these points. So basically, uh, they are saying that uh, uh, in those materials, uh, dispersion titanate and chromium titanate, uh, they observe the uh, Coulomb phase physics. Okay. <clears throat> so that means that uh, there is no uh, gauge charge, and in the language of the spin, uh, in the um, context of the spin lines, these are called uh, magnetic monopoles. Okay. Uh, I would I, I would say uh, spin lines monopoles. So because magnetic monopoles is a little bit confusing. <clears throat> okay. Um, cannot hear you, sorry. Uh, these columns? Oh, sorry, I didn't explain it. Uh, these are actually <clears throat> uh, uh, for the different channels. Actually, this is a neutron scattering uh, experimental result. And uh, this, okay, this is uh, this uh, bottom uh, three figures are uh, for, from the theory, and this comes from experiments. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> and SF means that, that this is a spin flip channel, so this is a kind of polarized neutron uh, scattering experiment. So namely, uh, they, are, uh, uh, they have instant uh, spin polarized neutrons. So neutrons uh, have a spin polarization. And so and then uh, uh, <clears throat> there's a scattering uh, matrix element, uh, depending on the, uh, whether uh, this neutron spins are flipped or not. Okay. <clears throat> and this is a, uh, this SF means that uh, this is an intensity for the spin flip. 
and this is a non-spin flip. So they have a different, uh, you know, matrix elements, <coughs> so that uh, they can, uh, I mean, gain more, more and more information. And uh, they say that, uh, I mean, by uh, performing on both experiments and uh, uh, theory, theoretical simulations on th this uh, dipole spin nice, uh, and comparing the experiments and theory for both uh, spin flip and non-spin flip, and then, uh, okay, so they have a nice agreement. So <clears throat> they want to, you know, convince, you know, people more and more strongly. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I talked about uh, uh, zero field case, but uh, if we apply magnetic field, so we, we I, I will explain the phase diagram of the magnetic field along the one 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 directions, and this is the, actually the, exactly what the experimental uh, observation of the magnetic station looks like. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, they apply a magnetic field on the one 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 directions, which is the one of the spin directions, and uh, starting from the zero feet case, uh, actually the magnetic station immediately uh, goes up, and uh, because of the thermal fluctuations at final temperature, it's, it, it is not uh, it doesn't jump at all, but uh, if we can ideally. Uh, cool down the system to the lowest temperature, like a ground state, so then it should actually jump uh, to the uh, two third <coughs> uh, uh, two -third plateau. And this plateau means that uh, um, we have uh, some mount station uh, patterns which actually satisfy spin rate rule. So the, the four spin in each tetrahedron should satisfy two into a spin rate rule. But uh, actually, uh, these four, three spins among the four spins on tetrahedron, uh, actually, uh, they are not fixed at all. But uh, actually, there are uh, several, uh, uh, you know, several choices for fixing those spins. Even, uh, uh, even I mean, they satisfy the spin as uh, configurations. And, <clears throat> okay, so we can flip this spin and this spin, or exchange this spin and this spin, but still, the energy is the same, okay? And so then the uh, extensive degeneracy of the uh, spin nice uh, is only partly, uh, you know, lifted. So, but uh, still, uh, there are some uh, extensive degeneracy in the ground state associated with the uh, 111 planes. Actually, they form a Kagome planes, Kagome lattice planes. So they uh, end up with the uh, Kagome spin nice, which is uh, actually realized on each uh, Kagome plane. <clears throat> okay. So this uh, magnetization plateau comes from the Kagome uh, physics, uh, although it's uh, still an Ising model. But uh, still, I mean, it's a kind of non-trivial observation. And then finally, uh, it goes up uh, again and to a saturated magnetization where uh, we have a three-in-one-out configurations, but not all-in-all-out. Okay. So interactions are always, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, ferromagnetic, or in a language of the Ising variable, it's anti-ferromagnetic. So spin angle uh, between this and this is actually uh, 140 degrees or so, so that, uh, you know, uh, uh, real uh, sign of the interaction in terms of spins uh, in the global frame, and also uh, there was uh, the angle uh, in the uh, local coordinate it's actually uh, opposite, okay? So if you talk about the sign of the exchange coupling in the uh, Ising variable, then it should be uh, anti-ferromagnetic. But uh, in the global coordinate frame, it should be, uh, uh, you know, ferromagnetic, okay? <coughs> so it, it, it actually it never goes to the audience or what. <coughs> okay, now, uh, um, we, I have already, I mean, explained a lot on uh, classical systems. But uh, I want to go to uh, quantum cases. But uh, <clears throat> actually, you know, um, when I uh, worked on a lot on these systems, uh, it, I mean, we we need to you know prove or give some evidence of the quantum effects first of all. So I like to show some uh, results uh, from the experiments uh, which suggest the quantum effects. Okay. So let me start with the exper experiments. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, one material uh, which is still controversial. 
And uh, I will talk about that uh, uh, tomorrow uh, the third talk. Um, <clears throat> so this is uh, Terbium Titan, and Terbium has uh, uh, a lot of actually F electrons. So a moment are quite large, a ten, almost uh, amount to a 10 UB. Uh, so it's comparably large as in uh, uh, this protium ions or holomium ions. So the uh, people uh, working on those systems uh, actually hope that uh, this will work, uh, I mean, as a classical spin lines, uh, as, I mean, uh, like in uh, other uh, holomium and dysprotium titanate. But uh, <clears throat> When they look at the experiment, it's clearly not like that. The first of all, uh, they observe a Curie wells temperature uh, is uh, antiferromagnetic. It's not that, uh, actually the ferromagnetic, uh, in, as in the case of the holomium titanate or dysfrosium titanate. So the, the people might uh, think that the interaction between the magnetic moments, like the Ising moments, might be antiferromagnetic. Uh, <clears throat> so then uh, we don't have uh, any, you know, uh, chance to have a spin ice physics because uh, there's no uh, frustration, this, and it should favor ordinary all out. But uh, you know, when we have ordinary all out, it's kind of a uh, trivial case that uh, we should expect a phase transition. But uh, if you look at uh, the neutron scattering experiments, there is no uh, clear uh, signal for the uh, black peak. <clears throat> and uh, this is some calculations based on a simple model for uh, uh, um, uh, by uh, Mr. Jingro. But uh, <clears throat> they are trying to explain these uh, uh, experiments from uh, uh, actually the single ion, uh, sorry, single uh, tetrahedron analysis. So they took a, a single tetrahedron and then tried to fit the experiment. But uh, still, I mean, it's, uh, you know, there's no way to have a long range order in a single tetrahedron analysis. So actually, it's not that meaningful at the moment. And there's another experiment from the MUSR. Uh, MUSR is a kind of a, a very sensitive probe to a local uh, magnetic moment. So when they see a, a fixed uh, local magnetic moment in the time scale of the uh, tens of uh, micro EV, micro uh, electron volt. And then uh, <clears throat> they can detect a uh, uh, sharp drop of the, uh, some intensity. And uh, one over T1, this is actually the spin relaxation rate, should increase at the, throughout the transition. <clears throat> but uh, if you look at this uh, result, uh, cooling down the system, uh, but still actually the one over T1 is finite and never diverges. And actually, it's saturated, so which means that uh, the spins remain paramagnetic. There's there's no uh, long range, at least magnetic dipole order. So this is a kind of puzzle. <coughs> so then, uh, as I mentioned, actually the uh, some people took a simple model to analyze, uh, which includes uh, only uh, <coughs> four spins, and kind of uh, it's kind of small cluster calculations, and including the <coughs> Heisenberg interactions, but not the uh, Ising model, <coughs> but include the Heisenberg interaction and the magnetic dipole interactions. And uh, actually, the, they also include, try to include the crystal field excitation, which I will explain uh, later in this talk. <coughs> so they actually basically treated uh, four levels, but not uh, two levels for Ising, but uh, two, uh, you know, two magnetic doublets. So then <clears throat> they draw some phase diagram uh, as a function of the coupling constants and also the crystal field excitations. And they say that in some cases, they can explain this kind of pattern well, but uh, <clears throat> it's not really convincing. And actually, the uh, you know, validity of the single tetrahedron analysis is kind of, it's, uh, it's really, uh, I can say that it's a it's nice approximation. <clears throat> so, uh, but uh, they pointed out that the possibility of having a quantum effects in uh, spin ice related materials is kind of a first <coughs> uh, suggestion from the theorist. 
so the actually the term quantum spin lines was uh, named by this uh, uh, gentleman. <coughs> Um, but uh, actually, the distinct, uh, definition for the quantum spin is, is not really clear at, um, at that moment. So, uh, so to uh, you know generalize uh, this uh, name, uh, actually, I, I like to say that uh, define the quantum spin as a uh, system which based on uh, con uh, spin nice physics. So that uh, as the interaction between the moments, nearest neighbor moments, is. Uh, uh, Ferromagnetic in the global frame or anti in the uh, local frame, but still contains some quantum, eff quantum effects. So, <clears throat> okay. So whether it is uh, uh, it behaves like in a quantum Coulomb phase or uh, ordered phase, it's kind of a system. Okay. So quantum spin a system, but not state. Okay. So how we use the quantum spin as a uh, uh, to you know, uh, focus on uh, some particular system, right? but not the ground state. <coughs> and there is another <coughs> material, of course, other materials. And uh, the second example is uh, plus linear particles. <coughs> so actually, here uh, um, I, I show the uh, kind of different quantity, like a uh, uh, whole conductivity. And this material is, has a conduction electrons coming from the iridium uh, 5D electrons. And, but uh, still, processing moments are uh, well localized uh, around the uh, uh, particle lattice sites. So they are almost decoupled in the level of the uh, ch electric charges. But uh, they can, of course, interact with each other through the magnetic interaction, super exchange, or some other interactions. OK. <clears throat> so then, uh, actually, the uh, when we worked on this uh, material, uh, we uh, actually the unpurposely uh, discovered some quite interesting feature. So this is the uh, hysteresis of the whole effect, I mean the whole conductivity. And the uh, <clears throat> whole conductivity at the zero field, I mean. So then uh, when we, uh, actually, actually this is the starting point. And if we start from the uh, zero, magnetic, zero magnetic field, so then actually it shows uh, some curve. But when we uh, uh, cool down, uh, when we, I'm uh, sorry, uh, sweep the magnetic field, and when we decrease the magnetic field, so then actually it goes in this direction. And then, uh, you know, uh, going that way. And then uh, coming from this side, then we start from uh, this uh, point, which is, uh, uh, you know, opposite to this state because of the time reversal, uh, uh, you know, transformations. <clears throat> and uh, starting from this point, and then uh, it goes up on uh, increasing field, then uh, goes to some point, uh, they actually merge into the another curve, and then uh, goes in this way. So there's a hysteresis in a uh, 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 whole conductivity. And the similar thing happens uh, for the monetization, but uh, it's, it's quite weak. And <clears throat> at the lowest temperature of the 0 0.06 Kelvin, like that is uh, 60, milli uh, 60 milli Kelvin, it's quite low. And then uh, <clears throat> monetization actually uh, shows a similar uh, behavior. Um, and those uh, might be uh, uh, associated with the kind of a spin freezing. And because the temperature is too low, so there's a several possibility that the experiment uh, is not uh, performed on uh, perfect equilibrium, but the partially spin frozen states. But okay, <clears throat> if we increase the temperature, then uh, the hysteresis in the monetizations actually suddenly uh, disappear. So at the 0.5 Kelvin, uh, please look at this red curve. So the hysteresis in the magnetization curve along, uh, uh, under the magnetic field actually disappears, completely disappears. So it's ir uh, irreversible. Okay. <clears throat> On the other hand, if you look at the whole conductivity, uh, this is actually a magnified view of this uh, low field state. Um, uh, even at the 0 0.5 Kelvin, we see a uh, uh, discernible hysteresis here. So that uh, uh, whole conductivity at the zero magnetic field is actually it's finite. It's not zero. 
So <clears throat> clearly, this is kind of a uh, very really strange observation yeah, because uh, okay, usually hollow effect appears when we break the time reversal. And when we break the time reversal, usually we expect a mount session or a mount applied magnetic field. <clears throat> so this is a measurement of the whole, conducti whole conductivity. Actually, they are uh, ob observing a uh, uh, vo voltage drop uh, <clears throat> along the transverse direction to the uh, magnetic field or mount stations. Okay? And they apply a current along some direction, and then um, apply a magnetic field or mount station to the transverse direction, and then uh, <clears throat> Measure our voltage drop along the south direction. Okay. So only when we have a finite mount station or magnetic field, they actually they appear a whole voltage. But uh, clearly, actually, <coughs> in this observation, mount station is actually almost zero, at least uh, uh, within the experimental errors or accuracy. So there should be something else. <coughs> And uh, there clearly, I mean, spins are not completely frozen state uh, because the amount station is irreversible. And, but still, whole conductivity is finite, namely the time level symmetry is broken. <coughs> so one possibility is that uh, uh, there are some spin ice correlations and uh, some uh, quantum effects uh, may, might change the state so that uh, uh, they pick up a, a kind of superposition of the spin nice root states with a broken time loss asymmetry. <clears throat> That's kind of expectation, or I mean, just uh, imagination without any proof. Well, there's, okay, uh, I will explain that in the next, next slide. So, <clears throat> this is the profile uh, as a function of the temperature. So uh, if we plot the whole conductivity at the zero magnetic field, uh, actually it's not complete at zero magnetic field, uh, but uh, at the small field, and also the mount station or the susceptibility uh, measured at a very small magnetic field along the 111 direction. So then actually they uh, show some uh, bifurcation here and there. But this, uh, the temperature at which they show uh, bifurcations are actually different. Okay. So for the monetization, I, they actually bifurcates at uh, around uh, 0.15 Kelvin. Uh, sorry, 0 0.25 uh, Kelvin. But uh, for uh, whole conductivity, actually it bifurcates at uh, 1.5 Kelvin. <clears throat> so actually, actually we are looking at a kind, kind of different physics uh, depending on the, you know, physical observables. So this is a plot uh, which uh, uh, we, we, we uh, I'm actually plotted uh, uh, zero feet uh, uh, extrapolated values of the mount station and also the whole conductivity. And if we plot this, then actually it's clear that the uh, whole conductivity appears uh, below 1.5K, but the mount station appears at uh, below 1.5K. Uh, two, five k or so. Okay. <clears throat> so there is a uh, some intermediate temperature range where we we have a broken time of symmetry, but the uh, strip paramagnetic. <clears throat> so, but actually, the, <clears throat> uh, this was uh, kind of uh, you know pioneering experiment. Uh, now I'm not an experimentalist, so uh, I, I I'm not really. Uh, right position uh, to comment on all the details of the experiments. But uh, nowadays that the uh, <coughs> Tokura group have developed uh, some other crystals uh, on the plasmodium irritates and uh, some solid, solid, solid state solutions with mixing with uh, 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 A-side ion with uh, uh, another A-side ion with the plasmodium. So then uh, they observe uh, some <coughs> uh, material dependent uh, uh, um, transition temperature for the Whole conductivity, uh, onset of the whole conductivity. So, this uh, TC for the time reversal symmetry breaking might uh, actually depend on materials, actually, or, and also the condition for the experiments. So, <clears throat> uh, so this actually experiment and uh, interpretation is still, uh, I mean, open. Uh, so, uh, 
actually uh, we are welcome on any welcome on any works on this uh, uh, observations. It's quite interesting. Okay, so in any case, <coughs> this suggests a uh, uh, very interesting possibility that uh, kind of kind of spin as physics may work in other materials like with uh, platinum and. Uh, uh, since we have uh, some non-trivial observation, so I mean that may be a quantum effect. <clears throat> okay, so. Mm. Actually, the yeah, I will talk about that later uh, in this talk. Uh, so please wait for us maybe ten or twenty mi minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Metallic. Yeah, this material is metallic. So iridium conducts an electron and carry uh, electron charge. Okay. But uh, basically coupled to the platinum moment and uh, for the magnetic moment, uh, because you know the platinum moments have a uh, J equal to three. So it's, uh, it's not as large as terbium or holmium titanate, or holmium ions, but uh, it's still large. And iridium has a one half. Okay, so it's quite different. <clears throat> Mountains means almost associated with the platinum, but not iridium. <clears throat> okay, oh, I'll skip this. <clears throat> um, okay, so we had already a question on uh, effects of the connection electrons, um, but uh, um, we, we, of course we need to investigate that. But beforehand, uh, actually, it's quite instructive to compare what uh, happens uh, in uh, insulating cases. For with the platinum ions, okay, this is a comparison. <clears throat> but actually, the result is that uh, you know the low, low T magnetism is concerned. Um, actually, there's not much difference. Okay. Sorry. So what time? <clears throat> uh, Forty-five minutes left. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so far, so good. <laughs> and uh, okay, so this is a metallic case with the iridium, and uh, this is a these are insulating cases with the uh, 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 tin and also the zirconium. Zirconium. And um, if you look at uh, one of a chi or susceptibility, and this behaves like this, and there's no uh, you know intense uh, singularity. And also in a platinum stannate case, on a zirconate case, there's no much, uh, you know, difference. Actually, if you look at this behavior and uh, this behavior, this behavior, so they almost uh, look similar. And uh, Curie-Watt's temperature is always antiferromagnetic. Okay. And if you look at the uh, specific heat, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, specific heat divided by temperature or specific heat here. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, uh, uh, there is a short key peak, uh, as in the case of the dipolar spin nice, um, but there is no singularity. And also here, uh, for ziliconate, they have some short key peak. Uh, this is a C, but not C of a T, but in any case, there's only a short key peak. And uh, <clears throat> uh, they also have a, a residual entropy associated with uh, probably associated with the spin nice uh, physics. Because um, <clears throat> this is a uh, entropy, right? These curves are entropy under some fields, but in any case. And there is actually a, uh, a strange field dependence, but uh, even at zero field, it doesn't reach to log two. Okay? So at least partially, a uh, spin degeneracy remains. It's clear. <clears throat> and also in this case. For the platinum zirconium. So, uh, I mean, why not working on uh, simpler cases with of the you know insulating materials? Okay. So, <clears throat> forget about the conduction electrons. So, let's focus on uh, insulating cases. That's much easier. <clears throat> and there are other uh, you know striking evidences from experiments on the quantum effects. So this is uh, in elastic experimental, uh, in elastic neutron scattering experimental results um, on platinum stannate and ziliconate, and also ytterbium titanate and terbium titanate. 
And <clears throat> it's clear that the excitations uh, appear within a uh, finite range, uh, ranging from uh, 0 to point, say, uh, 3 or 4, midi uh, 4 electron volt, midi electron volt, so which is of the order of the few Kelvin. Okay. <clears throat> it's quite large. And in the, uh, uh, actually, uh, I didn't plot it, plot for the, I didn't give a plot for the diaper spin nice case, but uh, actually in that case, it's, it's, it only shows up uh, within a very narrow window around zero energy. So they're all uh, quasi-elastic. So it, it is uh, actually much beyond uh, quasi-elastic. <clears throat> and if you look at, uh, for instance, the plasma zirconate, uh, it's also clear that uh, the range of the intensity actually expands to even more. Um, okay. And similar things happens also in a terbium titanate, also uh, uh, ytterbium titanate. Okay. So it seems that uh, exchange interactions will be of the order of the bandwidth, and that will be a uh, few Kelvin. Okay. So we already have uh, three candidates, prosthenium particles, and ytterbium particles, and terbium particles. Okay. <clears throat> So then uh, the question arises: So what is the reasonable model for uh, for uh, understand these behaviors? And <clears throat> so you know, ad hoc um, attempt uh, can also be made uh, by assuming uh, Heisenberg type interactions, but uh, clearly it's it doesn't work. Um, and actually, the, there was a work on a terbium titanate starting from the Heisenberg model with a. Uh, uh, magnetic dipole interactions, but uh, clearly that didn't work. So uh, the question is uh, <clears throat> uh, how to model the system. <clears throat> okay. um, so probably I should better switch to uh, now Blackboard talk. Um, can I? <clears throat> um, Hello, uh, will you switch to turn on the light? And <clears throat> yeah, basically, uh, we are trying to model uh, uh, spin degrees of freedom of the real earth and uh, based on a localized uh, picture of the spin moments. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Um, well, depends. Uh, can, can we keep this and while well, giving a blackboard talk? So I think uh, it's, it's nice. It's nice just to turn on the light. Yes. So basically, uh, what I try to explain uh, right now is uh, kind of derivation of the super exchange interactions uh, for between uh, uh, F electrons uh, for uh, rare earth magnetic moments. <clears throat> so this is kind of a, a perturbation uh, expansion uh, based on a strong in the strong coupling limit. So uh, OK, so it's now getting better. So basically, uh, we uh, start from a, a localized picture, so where we only have a Kudo interactions, and also the strong LS coupling. So, <clears throat> so basically, we first of all work on a, a cluster model uh, where we have a. Um, <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> rear earth moment, and actually, uh, two near nearest neighbor rear earth uh, ions are connected with uh, oxygen ligand, <clears throat> and depending on the rear earth ion, they have a different number of F electrons. And uh, <clears throat> for plasma case, uh, it has a 
uh, two F electrons. And uh, uh, okay. for terbium ion, uh, actually, I forgot. Uh, <coughs> Um, eight. I remember it should be eight. Wow. Well, well, I need to check later. <clears throat> and uh, for ytterbium ion, uh, thirteen F electrons. <clears throat> Actually, I'm not hundred percent sure. Maybe eight. But uh, please correct me if if you think it's wrong. But I can I I will check it later. <clears throat> And uh, for ytterbium, hmm? Baker, maybe ten. That should be uh, even. Huh? Oh, okay, okay. Should be bigger. Okay. Um. Is it readable? So two F electrons, and for terbium, uh, should be maybe F10. And uh, at least these are the candidates. Um, <coughs> and actually, F electron uh, in a closed shell, it, there are uh, 14. So it means that uh, just one, one hole at each side. Okay. <clears throat> so this is a one hole problem, and this is a two electron problem. And basically, we are treating a cluster of uh, comprising of the two rare ions and a single uh, oxygen site in between. <clears throat> actually, uh, this is uh, this uh, is actually located at the center of the tetrahedron, and uh, of course, there are much more uh, complicated network of the. Uh, uh, which, I mean, uh, provided some interaction between the uh, uh, father and neighbor uh, real moments. But um, of course, this should be the dominant source. So uh, <clears throat> I can just focus on this and maybe uh, uh, give some uh, brief uh, arguments about the other uh, processes. <clears throat> okay. And the starting point should be. Uh, um, uh, cool interaction. <clears throat> uh, of course, uh, it, if this is, uh, you know, uh, we are treating uh, F electrons. So uh, four F electrons, I mean, this is four F. The wave functions are actually well localized around the atomic sites. So uh, uh, that, that means that the cool interaction is quite large. like. Uh, 10, minute, 10 electron volt or even larger. Okay. <clears throat> um, it's of the order of 10, 10 electron volt. And the next, next leading should be uh, an Huntrude's coupling or LS coupling. <clears throat> and uh, this is comparably large, uh, probably uh, <clears throat> and also uh, crystal electric field uh, potential. Uh, actually, this, this term is, uh, OK, so the source of the LS coupling, is, is, I, I think it's clear, right? So this comes from the Hunt rule. And this is particularly important for 4F electrons. So this means that the J is a better quantum number than spin or orbital. Okay. <clears throat> and the crystal field actually comes from the uh, <clears throat> I mean, some of the surrounding uh, ions. Um, say. <clears throat> so 
So this is kind of electrostatic potential created by the surrounding. Okay? So that's kind of provide, provided by the environment in the crystal. So <clears throat> yeah, first of all, uh, because of the large chemical interactions, we can focus on, for instance, particular uh, um, you know, lowest energy configurations. So this splits the levels uh, uh, with, uh, depending on the number of the F electron configurations, right? So for instance, in the case of platinum, the F2 is lowest. And, and actually, the F0, F1, uh, F3, and other configurations has a much higher energy. Okay? So then uh, <clears throat> if we talk about the ground state, we can focus on F2 states. Okay? That's why we wrote that. I wrote, so, I wrote so. And actually, of course, it depends on the number of electrons, F electrons. So in the case of the ytterbium titanate, ytterbium ions, then I should be uh, uh, F13. <clears throat> okay? So this is for prosodinia. <clears throat> And that's why we okay, so focus on this ground state. And then uh, effect of the LS coupling is also uh, actually simple. So that uh, now J is a uh, good quantum number. Um, Um, I mean, a good, I mean, a, a approximately good quantum number. So, in the first case, the Cassini-Mus case, this doublet is a non Kramer's doublet, as mm -hmm. you write. Mm -hmm. uh, so, why is the degeneracy not lifted by uh, distorting the lattice? Uh, <coughs> Yeah, of course, uh, if we distort the lattice, the level schemes are completely, become completely different. So basically, uh, that, I mean, double degeneracy of the, each magnetic doublet actually split. But uh, I mean, there's no experimental uh, evidence that uh, the symmetry of the crystal is, I mean, lowered from the ideal case for the uh, yeah. pyrochrome. Do we understand why is it true from energetics? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so why? Uh, um, okay, so I need to explain more before okay. going to reaching that point. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> so first of all, the LS, because of the LS coupling, J is a good quantum number, and so let's fix J. And uh, <clears throat> but still, actually, for instance, in the case of the prosodinium, uh, well, actually, the, it's it's much simpler in the ytterbium case because only there's one uh, uh, F electron hole. So <clears throat> for instance, in that case, the configuration is restricted to uh, 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 multiple uh, describe this <clears throat> for uh, <clears throat> and you know, in this notation actually, uh, this is nothing but 2s plus 1. s is the total spin, uh, angular momentum. And this is uh, j, total j. And this is uh, uh, angular momentum, right? So f means that the l equals to 3. And uh, of course, uh, we, we can derive the uh, similar uh, multiplets of uh, total angular momentum J for uh, prosodinium and uh, terbium. So for the prosodinium, we have uh, two, uh, uh, two spins, uh, two electrons. So uh, S equal to one. So it should be three. And uh, L, must be, uh, uh, L must be three plus one. Uh, C plus two, and uh, S should be uh, two, and uh, five, L equal five means that uh, <coughs> P, P, D, F, G, H, should be H, 
and the j must be uh, <coughs> this divided this uh, subtract this by this, so this should be three. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, uh, this should be s equal to one. Okay, so this should be four. Yeah, this is for the platinum case. <coughs> so similarly, uh, we can do the same thing uh, for terbium cases. And uh, <coughs> uh, so we have a question. Uh, so actually, this has a, a you know, even number of electrons, and uh, that is also the case for the terbium case. <coughs> And uh, <clears throat> so then, uh, actually, the level schemes are completely different. And in this case, actually, there is only an odd number of electrons. So that uh, 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 actually, the, there is only uh, always a uh, mass degeneracy in any level scheme, any levels. So <clears throat> there are only uh, magnetic doublets. And this is Kramas. And <clears throat> they behave, uh, you know, they transform uh, under the time reversal operation as in the uh, usual spin one half spin off. Okay. So this can be treated as a spin one half uh, <clears throat> spins, I mean, effective spins. But uh, for this case, <clears throat> uh, because uh, there are uh, even number of electrons. Uh, this Kramer's theorem doesn't apply. And sometimes <coughs> we have magnetic doublet. But sometimes singlet. Okay. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> those are uh, actually I already uh, introduced uh, the doublets and singlets. But uh, you might uh, feel uh, very strange uh, because uh, we I started from the uh, LS coupling, the Kuro interaction LS coupling. Then there is no way to split levels. So there are uh, uh, many levels, uh, uh, many degeneracies associated with this multiplet. And <clears throat> these are actually provided by crystalline, crystalline electric field. So <clears throat> yeah, for instance. Uh, if we have a top view of a tetrahedron, uh, <coughs> so then actually there are trigonal uh, crystalline electric field. So this this is my uh, real ion, and this is actually the another oxygen site, <coughs> and actually there are even more. Even more uh, oxygen ions, and the uh, <coughs> point group is given by D3D. So this is a, a trigonal point <coughs> with uh, uh, mirrors and uh, some C2 rotations. Okay, <coughs> and this means that uh, if we uh, uh, perform a uh, you know. Uh, multipolar expansions of these Kuro interactions. So uh, you know this this term actually comprises of the sum of the uh, 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 environmental ions. So we need to sum of uh, all the environments. Okay. <clears throat> so we need to sum up all the Kuro interactions uh, from uh, different uh, ions around the real moment. So <clears throat> if we do that, so then we end up with uh, you know multiple expansion. And which uh, contain uh, uh, <coughs> some uh, operators which changes uh, uh, oops, uh, I need more space. We have uh, um, this kind of terms. 
and also because there are uh, you know three four fold rotational symmetries, we can change uh, orbital uh, angular momentum number uh, m m of l uh, by three freely. Okay, there's no conservation law, right? There's no uh, rotation symmetry. Okay, only a uh, uh, three four fold rotation symmetry. So which means that uh, there is always a coupling. Like this, or uh, of course, <coughs> so we can change right in the ground state. Uh, <coughs> we can change the orbital angular momentum by three. Okay, that's the actually essence. And of course, uh, there is some uh, dependence on L, ML. And even more high order terms, where we can change uh, angular momentum by six. Okay. <clears throat> so, because of these interactions, okay, so we do not have uh, full rotational symmetry. Okay. So then the, now the multiplets are split into several uh, doublets or sometimes singlets. Okay. And uh, if we have a time reversal symmetry, uh, sorry, if there is a Kramer's theorem, uh, if Kramer's theorem applies. So then uh, all the uh, multiplets, uh, I mean, split from this original multiplets have a uh, Kramer's degeneracy. But uh, if there is, uh, if uh, Kramer's theorem doesn't apply for even for, uh, as in a case of the uh, <coughs> prosodinium or terbium ions, so then uh, there is no, uh, no theorem which, you know, uh, constraint that uh, all, all these uh, levels have a gamma uh, degeneracy. But sometimes uh, they have a singlet and uh, doublets. <clears throat> so uh, as we have questions or comments, uh, this doublet, it's not protected by the time reversal symmetry. So the crystal uh, symmetries actually protects this uh, uh, degeneracy, double degeneracy. But uh, still, they can uh, actually contain amyotic dipole moments. Okay. <clears throat> so if there is a huge lattice vibration which couple to this uh, potential, and that if there is a mode which changes the uh, crystal, field, uh, crystal symmetry, so then now, uh, I mean, dynamically it can fluctuate. But still, uh, <clears throat> on average, I mean, a static sense, there is a strict uh, crystal symmetry, which uh, actually uh, guarantees that, that there is a double degeneracy. <clears throat> that may answer to the question. Okay. Um, sorry, I can. Can you repeat? In this presidium compounds, including presidium zirconate, uh, do we understand from more microscopic uh, considerations why there is no static distortion which lifts this, uh, quenches this entropy? Um, okay, actually, that's uh, beyond my talk today, but uh, actually, that will be covered tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, but uh, because, I mean, we need a more basic understanding, right? So, <clears throat> but uh, in, uh, Brief answer to the question is that experiments on the plasticity particles are not as much, uh, you know, uh, as much as in a case of the, for instance, ytterbium titanate. So, I mean, actually, we have less information from experiments. So, probably, I mean, uh, we may explain, uh, I mean, more from the microscopic details that, uh, I mean, why uh, experiments may show. Uh, Kind of similarity to the U1 quantum spin liquid, or or not? Okay, but uh, at the moment we have uh, less information from experiments, so we are waiting more <coughs> to come. Okay, <coughs> so basically these are the uh, microscopic details for the localized uh, rare earth moment, I mean a local environment. Okay. <coughs> So then, uh, 
um, I mean, solving this uh, local uh, local cluster model. I mean, basically, the, this is a model only a local model for uh, layout moments, right? So there's no uh, charge transfer between the uh, nearest neighbor or even further neighbor uh, ions. We just uh, focused on the local uh, local layout mode. I mean, local layout levels. Okay. But now uh, <coughs> we need to you know connect near, nearest neighbor moments. Okay. So <coughs> by solving these uh, you know Hamiltonians, uh, we have a ground state for local uh, F electron uh, many body wave function. And so that uh, this could be a, a, a kind of superposition of uh, several uh, Uh, several states, like uh, like in the in the re representation of the uh, orbital magnetic, uh, I'm sorry, total magnetic moment. So now, okay, sorry, this is not m of l, but m of j. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so the basically uh, we have a uh, uh, crystal electric field Hamiltonian uh, in the uh, representation of the uh, orbital uh, index l, ml, but. Uh, <coughs> Since we have a, a LS multiplet, so if we project it onto, if we project this, uh, um, multiplet of the total angular momentum J. So then uh, we end up with uh, actually the similar uh, operators, like uh, sometimes called uh, Stevens uh, equivalence operators. And uh, this is uh, actually uh, pretty much details, uh, technical details, so I don't want to spend so much time on that. But uh, <clears throat> I mean, if you look at our uh, uh, peer review papers and also a uh, paper by Michel Jingra, then uh, actually you can follow what we uh, really uh, did. So basically, uh, if we construct a crystal field, crystal electric field Hamiltonian in the space of in the representation of the M or L, then uh, we can uh, project it onto the uh, LS multiplet. Then we have a similar operators, a similar operator or Hamiltonian in the space of the in the representation of the J. So, so then uh, we we have uh, we are allowed to change M of J by three because again. By this uh, threefold symmetry, okay. So then uh, our grand, uh, ground state wave function, or any kind of uh, wave functions, which is eigenstate of this Hamiltonian, should take this form. Okay. There are some uh, parameters which is fixed by uh, details of the coupling constants, <coughs> and uh, if we have a certain number of for m of j, so then uh, we are always allowed to change it by three. And uh, this occurs um, when, whenever it is, it doesn't exceed, uh, you know, the range. Okay. <coughs> so m, m of L, uh, m of J, sorry, must be, uh, you know. Equal or larger than minus j to uh, j. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so we can uh, construct this wave function depending on the uh, layout moment. And actually, <coughs> there's a, a fast excited states. Um, sorry, this is, should be uh, uh, this should be level. Uh, actually, I mean. This is not restricted to the ground state, but uh, say I. So this is a label for the uh, <coughs> eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. Yeah. So then uh, <coughs> we can have a you know complete set of the eigenstate. 
um, <clears throat> uh, 2j plus 1 eigen, uh, 2j plus 1 eigen states maybe starting from 1 okay <clears throat> and of course uh, energy levels then actually uh, we can fit in elastic neutron scattering Uh, I mean, this is a local, so I mean, uh, this must be a result summed of, uh, uh, obtain, uh, this is a result obtained by sum, summing of uh, the, all the instances there over the momentum Q. Um, okay. <clears throat> by summing of, of this intensity over, all, over the brilliant zone, uh, so then uh, <clears throat> they can get the local information, right? So this local information must be associated with this uh, real Earth physics, local real Earth physics. So then, uh, uh, actually, depending on the material, they may show uh, some peak structure like this, right? Okay. This is experiment, kind of sketch of the experimental results. So <clears throat> uh, they have uh, peak positions and peak height. So then uh, it's possible to, I mean, some cases at least, uh, fit uh, those uh, experimental results by tuning the parameters in a crystal field Hamiltonian. Okay. Uh, this is uh, what ideally uh, must, uh, ideally the analysis must be done. And uh, in some cases, it was already done. <clears throat> okay. So now we have a local uh, wave function of F electrons. So now we can connect um, uh. sure. Okay, yeah. Depending on the real ions. Right. Well, uh, you know, a wave function could be a many body wave function, but uh, we can always, you know, uh, you know using the Wigner Cal theorem, so we can go to the single uh, electron representation in the strong LS limit. So we can, I mean, switch the representation, yeah, from one to the other. <clears throat> so now we need to uh, connect the uh, rare ions through oxygen. So we, we may have a doublet at the ground state of the local uh, real moment. And it could be uh, there are some others, some other doublets, or actually even singlets. <clears throat> and for, and actually uh, for uh, oxygen ions, there are six four degenerate p levels. Okay, so this is two p electrons. Okay, <clears throat> and here for uh, rare moments, actually f n electrons in general. So then <clears throat> it's possible to actually actually uh, you know I I'm drawing this picture uh, then uh, we have uh, you know charge transfer between uh, <coughs> F and P electrons so basically the Hamiltonian should look like uh, annihilating uh, uh, sorry creating uh, F electrons at the uh, real site and then annihilating P electrons uh, at the oxygen site, uh, of course, there's some level M. Um, okay. <clears throat> and uh, there's some dependence on M1 and M prime. Okay. This is a uh, hybridization. I 
I'm going to derive a super exchange Hamiltonian from for the local local localized uh, F electrons. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, basically, and uh, hybridization between the P and the F electron uh, actually categorized uh, into two parts, and one is a sigma bonding, and the other is a pi bonding. So there are two different uh, <coughs> degrees of freedom for the hybridization matrix phi. <coughs> now, of course, uh, they must be summed over all the elements. Okay. <coughs> so then, uh, I just perform uh, strong coupling uh, perturbation expansions, assuming that uh, there is a Coulomb interaction. Actually, I haven't used that so much on the, uh, so much the Coulomb interaction part of the rare earth moment, but now uh, it entered the problem. <clears throat> okay, so if we change uh, number of the F electrons, actually we have energy cost from the Coulomb interaction. Okay, so uh, and uh, also any hybridization process uh, should change number of the F electrons. And the p electrons. Okay, so for for this process, create one more extra uh, f electron and uh, annihilate p electrons. Okay, and here, uh, I mean, it's similar, but uh, creating a f electron on another uh, f electron site, which is nearest nearest to the uh, this this site. Okay, we are treating a three site problems. And this is a fast order process in uh, hybridization V, but uh, we need to perform a fourth order in the perturbation expansions. Okay. So this is uh, pretty much like in a, a standard uh, uh, derivation of the Anderson super exchange interactions, but now in the basis of the uh, multiplet, J multiplet. Uh, sorry, I cannot hear you. In the super exchange uh, channel, the third uh, row, F3, P4, F3. Uh, F no. Uh, yeah, the middle one. Mm -hmm. uh, the middle. Uh, F3, yeah, that one. So that means two uh, charge from oxygen atom effectively mm -hmm. go to the uh, means mm -hmm. ion site. Yep. So that is double charge transfer. Yeah. So we need to perform the expansion uh, in the fourth order okay. to the fourth order. So we have uh, several processes. Okay. Yeah, at uh, I mean the same level of the, you know. So uh, that is not the Anderson uh, super exchange like thing. Hmm? Uh, the, that process is not the Anderson like super exchange where effectively. It, yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, actually, the, when we derive the conventional uh, super exchange interactions uh, uh, proposed by Anderson, we also need to include this. Okay. Yeah. This is much much more like that, but with uh, different uh, representations, but not in a spin, but uh, total angular momentum or yeah, and uh, MJ or. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So then uh, we have a, a strong coupling Hamiltonian. So. Uh the fact when you change uh, the number of electrons on the F sites, this level diagram th should change. Uh, doesn't that complicate uh, the calculation? Oh, sorry, of, you. So when I change the number of electrons mm -hmm. uh, on the F sites, mm -hmm. this level diagram, this gamma representations change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. So doesn't that in, uh, introduce extra uh, okay. complications yeah, in the that's calculation? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. So of course, uh, we we already had uh, um, H LS and H crystal electric field. So uh, ideally, I mean, we should perform, uh, we should use the basis, uh, which is the eigen state of this uh, entire Hamiltonian. But uh, I, as I already mentioned, that for F electrons, for F electrons. Uh, Kuro interaction is pretty large. Okay? It's most dominant. Okay? And this is a sublinear. Okay? So, I mean, this is you know, the fast order approximation. And if we excite, uh, I mean, charge degrees of freedom, 
and then we, energy, we have energy caused by cooling interactions. And of course, we have some uh, you know, minor correction from you know, LH coupling and uh, pre-stylistic feeds. But uh, I mean, they are not dominant. So uh, you know, it's, a, it's a good starting point, even, even though it, they are ignored. Even though they are bigger than the, uh, uh, hybrid, uh, the hopping uh, terms? Well, you know, in the final, uh, final you know, expressions of the super exchange coupling constants, so this contains uh, some number times u in the denominator. And if we include this uh, effect, this will add some terms in the denominator. And if we expand in a, in a hybridization V, and we need our fourth order, right? So we have a third, uh, third order you know, for the denominator. So <clears throat> I mean, of course, it can change right? uh, some number here. But it's not dominant. It cannot be dominant compared to you. Okay? That's, the, that's actually the, the approximation we took. So of, course, uh, it's all, 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 of course, it's entirely possible to include all these uh, you know, effects uh, from microscopic arguments. But uh, I mean, uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> the estimate of the coupling constant uh, uh, strongly depends on the wave functions. Okay? And the uh, estimate of the wave function, at, particularly for four F electrons, is pretty hard. And even using uh, first principle calculations, it's almost uh, uh, actually uh, it's pretty, it's pretty bad, I would say. So uh, <clears throat> I, I don't take the you know, estimate of the coupling constants so, uh, seriously, but the uh, form of the coupling constants. Okay? <clears throat> and then uh, if we get uh, some plausible Hamiltonian, then uh, we can you know, tune parameters to you know, fit experiments. Yeah, that's our strategy. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but you are completely right. So then, uh, okay. So I skip uh, all these uh, lengthy calculations, which is done explained in the paper. Uh, if you're interested, please look at this paper. And for actually for yttrium titanate, for yttrium ions, uh, since we can just treat a single hole in an F electrons, so the process is much simpler, and wave function looks also much simpler. So this is easier to read, actually. And then, <clears throat> in any case. We end up with uh, this weird uh, Hamiltonian. <clears throat> it, it looks quite ugly, but uh, I can explain. Uh, so the first time actually comes from uh, the same uh, source as in uh, Glasgow spin ice. So this basically comes from the uh, Ising interactions. This takes the form of Ising interactions. And here, actually, I took a basis. Uh, of the spins. Uh, actually, this is not really a spin, but uh, <coughs> effective, uh, effective spins, which describe the doublet, ground state doublet. Okay? <coughs> so this is kind of a spin one half variable, uh, or pseudo spin, uh, pseudo spin one half variable. And might not uh, directly relevant uh, associated with the uh, uh, magnetic dipole moment. So actually, magnetic dipole moment takes this form. So for the direction uh, components along the 111 uh, crystal, uh, 111 direction, actually it has a particular uh, G tensor component. But uh, for the transverse component, uh, there's another component. And uh, they are not equal in general. Okay? <clears throat> and the point is that uh, for non cramas ions, this uh, G transverse actually vanishes. Okay? That's the point. And this can be actually uh, proved easily by the symmetry arguments. <clears throat> and okay, so in that case, actually, the Z, only Z component, local Z component, coupled to the magnetic dipole moment. And okay, if we go back to the Hamiltonian, so uh, in the local basis SZ, uh, we have Ising interaction, and there is a U1 symmetric interaction like this: S plus S minus plus S minus S plus. And there's uh, another interaction which uh, actually was uh, uh, found that uh, found to be a 
interaction between the uh, electric cutoff moments in the case of the platinum or terbium case uh, moments. Um, there's a coupling between them. Uh, so this term cannot arise from, for instance, uh, uh, Heisenberg type uh, Hamiltonian uh, between uh, 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 J, uh, total angular momentum J. Okay? So this is uh, not in a dip magnetic dipole, but electric quadrupole interaction. <clears throat> so that's actually the reason why I noted uh, with some, uh, I mean, character Q, because it is associated with the quadrupole moments in some cases. <clears throat> and there is uh, another interaction, uh, which is the last term, which couples uh, Z component, and then with the one-on-one -on -one component of the pseudo spin with the transverse component. Um, and this term only appears uh, for uh, Kramer science, okay? <clears throat> and for non Kramer science, since SZ and S plus or S minus are tra uh, transforms differently under the time reversal, and SZ is uh, odd in, under time reversal, but SX, SY, S plus, S minus are uh, uh, even under time reversal, there should be no coupling in the non Kramer's case. But uh, for the, only for the Kramer's case, they have. <clears throat> And okay, so then now we end up with this Hamiltonian. And the coupling constants uh, can be represented uh, as a function of uh, the kind of uh, this uh, hybridization uh, uh, matrix elements. And also uh, wave functions, uh, details of wave functions here, there, okay? <clears throat> and uh, we can compute uh, from a semi quantity uh, semi-microscopic arguments like this. And <clears throat> actually, of course, uh, it's not possible to completely fit experiments from this uh, microscopic arguments. But in any case, this is a kind of good starting point. <clears throat> and of course, we can add uh, magnetic dipole interactions, OK? Uh, and uh, again, uh, only for uh, Kramer science, we have a contribution from the transverse components. And for non gramma scion, I'm actually, they, they don't have this, these terms. In any case, we can construct magnetic dipole interactions. So now uh, we have a <clears throat> kind of suitable model to uh, you know, try to understand experiments. And I think I already, I mean, sorry, I mean, seven minutes already uh, passed. So <clears throat> thank you for attention. I mean, this is the uh, a fast part of my talk. <clears throat>